Lord, even in churches around the world, as, as they are taking this bread and drinking this cup, it's setting an atmosphere. And Lord, it's breaking the back of the enemy. And Father, we do declare that we do overcome the enemy by the blood of the Lamb and the word of what? Our testimony. Lord God, our mouth is so vitally important. And we declare that we are the blood-washed bride. We declare, that's our testimony, that we are the blood-washed bride. Amen? Jesus' name. Amen. You know, it's sort of weird being up here. You know, yes, we're, I'm taller. We like being down there. But for the camera reasons and for all of you that are watching, we're doing this. We're sucking it up to do this. But you know me and you know David, we run amongst you. So we'll probably be doing that. All right, so... Uh, first and foremost, before we get into Acts, which is really fun, and, and I wanted to preach first because I knew Charlita had shared what she was going to share, and I went right along with what I'm going to share. So I like to see the Holy Spirit when he's on a, a, a move here to go with that. And then you'll see why we're going to end in worship today because we're going to come into a place of peace and shalom with him and who he is in our life and who he is in our nation, who he is in the world, okay? And then uh, we're going to go from there. All right, so the elephant in the room, see it? Well, that not that elephant, but there is an elephant. People wonder why that's hanging up there. We had a prophetic artist that came in our art section over there uh, where Sherry is and... and uh, and where she's operating our Facebook Live. And he is a prophetic artist, and he was painting, and he had donated. He wasn't painting the elephant, but he had donated that to us. And when you look up what elephant means in the dream book, which, by the way, the dreamers are coming, Adrian, and they're coming that wrote that book in April along with Lana Vassar. And... Uh, but it means magnificent, big, huge ministry, vocation, uh, re uh, 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 not responsibility, but um, calling. And what else? It means a lot. The, the elephant is, is like a, the elephant in the room. And people, we were saying, what do you see that elephant? What do you see in that elephant? And we had a Sunday where they were speaking out. And you can see that he is walking on the water. He's not in the water. He's walking on the water. And Jesus is actually, when you go up closer and you look at the top of his crown, the top of the elephant's head, you'll see Jesus. And so it's really sort of neat. But the elephant in the room right now is coronavirus. And we're going to deal with this um, as warriors and believers and um, so I'm going to read because truth sets the enemy to flight, right? And one of the parts of the word that um, the Lord had me deliver at the beginning of the year, actually it was the end, very last week in December. If you want to go back and hear the full word, I'm only going to take a snippet out of it, but is about the word of our mouth because in the Hebraic, New Year, which started in September of 2019, 5780, it means the mouth of all things. You know, the Lord is ahead of everything. So he was giving it the heads up about putting a guard on our mouth and what we give wind to. What do we give breath to? And the breath in a believer is the Holy Spirit, isn't it? And so we're either going to give breath to fear or we're going to give breath to faith. Is that correct? And so we're choosing right now to declare to panic and fear in this nation. 
to bow in the name of Jesus. Uh, it shocked me, even in, in the body of Christ. Now, there's prophets that are rising up and that are speaking to this in this last week. And, um, but I'm going to give some statistics. I'm going to give um, some real numbers here. Who has heard the president in the last few days? He's given uh, press conferences, not very many. So I'm going, to, I'm going to reiterate what's coming from him. And, um, and, and I don't tend to listen much to the media. I'm very picky. We're very picky about where we're putting our eye gate and our ear gate. That was part of the word. Because, see, what we see, 2020 vision, we're in 2020, what we see and give eyesight to and what we hear and give ear gate to is what our mouth will tend to speak. Is that correct? So we need to watch what we see and have, when we do see, we need to have supernatural insight by God to see the bigger plan, the bigger purpose. So let me tell you what I believe the bigger plan that God showed me, the insight of what just happened. I find it very peculiar, to say the least, of the timing of this virus. Can anybody agree? I find it very suspicious of how it all of the sudden popped. And I find it very interesting that it popped in China. I find it very interesting that it came out of a biotech lab. I find that very interesting. I'm also excited about Purim. I find it very interesting and exciting that Purim happens to be at this appointed time on the 9th of March going into the 10th. Now tell me what happened on Purim. Who hung? Haman, Haman hung. And he, Haman, just meticulously planned and schemed. And I, I think he personally probably weaved the gallow, the noose for the gallow. I think he took, and he probably had a part in that. He wanted every little strand to make sure it could hold up for the public hanging of first Mordecai and then the extermination of all of Israel, right? The Hebrews. But then what happened is, you know, Esther, you know, a woman... Queen Esther was prepared for such a time, right? And she had the king's ear. So she got to come in there with the sword of truth. And so what happened then is that Mordecai got off, but Haman hung. That which the enemy meant to take uh, Mordecai out and the children of Israel turned. He was taken out as a result. All right. And the enemy's plan and purpose and scheme. I'm believing that Haman's going to hang on the same strategy that he concocted to bring panic, divisiveness, and terror and sickness, disease, and infirmity in not only our nation, but globally. Because God's plan is to bring worldwide revival and awakening. And there is not a man, there is not a plan, and there is not a demon big enough to thwart and stop what God has predestined and ordained for such a time as this. And I'm declaring that to the atmosphere over this church, over this mountain, over this state, over this nation, and over this world, in Jesus' name, that there will be absolutely no weapon formed against us that can or will prosper, and every tongue that raises its stinking head against 
against us in the form of a judgment, accusation, curse, hex, vex, spell, or incantation. We condemn it now in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah, Jesus. The enemy is terrified. He is mortified and terrified because the body of Christ globally is rising up and having a voice. Look at the yellow vested people in France and they're protesting. They're not protesting high gas prices. That's a lie from the fake news. I'm sorry. No, I'm not sorry. They're fake. I'm sorry. They're fake. They are protesting the globalistic plan of Luciferianism. Do you understand globalism comes from Luciferianism? Research it. Research what is being fed to us. The enemy wants to push us in, which was part of the word, into a uh, premature cycle. He's trying to push us into an antichrist system prematurely before the time of God. He's trying to push it. Anything that is motivated and stoked by fear, is that from God? Is there going to be a time of tribulation? Will there be a time of an antichrist system? Right? Right now on the timetable of God is massive awakening and harvest. Nations are rising up all over the globe right now. You can see it even in Iran. Iran has got the biggest church growth going on underground. Iran in the place of the most horrific regime. God has met his people and is blowing up his church. Hallelujah. What's that? Right. Is that interesting? And China, speaking of that, is also one of the fastest growing churches in the world. So let's just strip away all this natural stuff. NBC, CNN, Fox. CBS, I put them all in it because it's a natural realm thing. And what is the biggest purpose? Holy Ghost, show us. What is the purpose of the enemy in this hour? What is his goal? To do what? To kill, steal, and destroy what? What? He wants to stop the harvest. That's it. He wants to stop the most amazing, most magnificent, most outstanding harvest that this world has ever seen. He wants to stop believers reaching out. If we're all scaredy cats, what happens to missions? What happens to missions? We're all hunkered down with face masks on. But we believe in the blood. But we're not applying the blood. It will rob us. And it will paralyze our voices. It will paralyze our mission work. It will paralyze the coming together, gathering together with that one voice that absolutely terrifies the enemy. That's the bigger purpose of the enemy. And it may take out a person prematurely before they get saved. See, what's the bigger purpose? We always need to be asking ourselves, what's the bigger purpose here? 
We're looking here, and there is a virus. I'm going to talk about this virus. We need to be attentive to this. We can't be stupid. But we have to look at it outside of what the screaming voices are saying. Oh, 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 What does God say? What's God say about all this? Psalms 91. I'm going to read it. I'm going to read it. Where's my clicker? Where is it? There it is. Hey, this is premature. <laughs> all right. I was going to do this later, but we're going to say, we're going to look at this. This is out of the um, Passion Translation. Okay, when you sit enthroned under the shadow of Shaddai, you are hidden in the strength of God most high. He's the hope that holds me and the stronghold to shelter me. The only God for me and my great confidence. He will rescue you from every hidden trap of the enemy. And he will protect you from false accusation. And what? Do you all believe that? Okay, I'm trying to get it, but it's not going, Terry. Okay. His massive arms are wrapped around you, protecting you. You can run under his covering of majesty and hide. His arms of faithfulness are a shield keeping you from what? Arms. Keeping you from? Arms. How about coronavirus? Yeah. How about the flu? Yeah. You will never worry about an attack of demonic forces at night nor have to fear a spirit of darkness coming against you. Is that right? Yeah. Don't fear a thing. Whether by night or by day, demonic danger will not trouble you. Do we believe this? Nor will the powers of evil launched against you. Even in the time of disaster, with thousands and thousands being killed, you will remain unscathed and unharmed. You will be a spectator as the wicked perish in judgment. All these demons, we're going to see demons absolutely get massacred in this year. We're going to see massive exposure to wickedness and darkness. And we are beginning to see it. Did you know? Isn't this interesting? Over 12,000 CFOs and CEOs have resigned in the past two years. Do you find that strange that all of the sudden these massive important people are leaving in the masses? I guarantee you this, something is up. I think indictments are coming. I believe prison time for pedophiles in this nation and world. I believe sex trafficking of children are, is getting exposed in this time and hour. That's what I believe. That's what I believe. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. We're going to be spectators this year, and we're going to watch wicked principalities and principal principalities and altars and, and platforms that have been set up for generations in our nation. They're going to come crumbling down. You watch. It's going to start. It's happening right now, and we're going to watch it. We're going to see it come to pass in Jesus' name because we serve a righteous God, and his judgment is righteous. He is bringing justice, true justice, to this nation and to this world. The prayers of the righteous avail much. They will be paid back for what they have done. Every tear of every child 
and babies. Did you hear that the Senate did not pass the late term that when a baby is born alive from a botched abortion and that baby's there, perfectly healthy, sitting there, they're going to let that baby die. There's a woman. Did you tell Carol to come? Oh, it's already done? Last week. Dee Dee. Where's Dee Dee? She was here. There she is. Good. Thank you, Dee Dee. She was sending around a petition. Okay. Okay. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Dee Dee. We need 10,000 more signatures by tomorrow, I understand. Am I right? 10,000. Okay. When we live our lives within the shadow of God, most high, our secret hiding place, we will always, always, not sometimes, always be shielded from what? Harm. How then could evil prevail against us or disease infect us? God sends angels, the hosts of heaven. We're going to be doing some business today. Who's ready to do some business today? We're not just, you know, every church is unique and we're very unique. And we have a unique calling on this mountain because it's a strategic mountain. It's on Lookout Mountain, and it's also Mount Zion is down the road. So we got both of them. Look out, mountain. Those seven mountains, look out, mountains. Because from this place today, we're going to do business. And we're going to send our hosts because it's scriptural. Look out, devil. Look it out. Look out. All right, if you walk, he's special to protect you wherever you go, defending you from all. If you walk into a trap, they'll be there for you and keep you from stumbling. You'll even walk unharmed amongst the fiercest powers of darkness, trampling every one of them beneath your feet. See, this is the hour. Who came to boot camp? Who has been at a boot camp? This is the time for us not to shelter except under him. But it's to come forth. And one part of the word that I gave was that as we are declaring, we're walking into the manifestation of our declaration. This is the time to demonstrate the miracle working power of God, people. Don't allow the enemy to intimidate. Don't allow the enemy to to cause uh, fear and terror and panic because it paralyzes you. All right? Okay, trampling every one of them under your feet. Do you understand? He's under our feet. He's under our feet. I just see us going like this. Don't try me, devil. No, just like that testimony I gave in boot camp. This one man, remember, um, oh, he was Hispanic. He used to come to our church, and he went out on the streets with Mama. Roberto. Roberto. And he was out on the streets all the time. And he said, and you know, short, stocky guy, right? And he said, this man pulled a knife on him. He said, the love of Jesus, in Jesus' name, that guy flew back. 15 feet, didn't he say? That man flew back. Instead of being intimidated, and that man, do you think he got saved? Isn't that awesome? I hope this is just jerking your chain. I hope you just, I hope you have uh, heaven dreams, not nightmares, heaven dreams of God going, come on, get going, get going, come on, there's people, come on, there's, I am. For here is what the Lord has spoken to me. Because you've delighted in me 
as my great lover, I will greatly protect you. I will set you in a high place, safe and secure before my face. Where is that place? Seated where? In heavenly places, Ephesians, with Christ Jesus. We reside there. We live there. That's who we are. Is that right? The fact of the matter and the truth of the matter is through the blood, the precious blood of Jesus, and what Jesus did for us and bought for us. Ephesians says he placed you. Who did? Just like God placed Jesus, right? Put him there. Father God, Jesus put us in heavenly places. We reside there. We reside there. That's where we live, move, and have our being is in that place. Where we get into trouble is this right here, talking us out of who we are. All right. I will set you in a high place, safe and secure, before my face. I will answer your cry for help every time you pray. And you will find and feel my presence, even in your time of pressure and trouble. I will be your glorious hero and give you a feast. You will be satisfied with a full life and, will, uh, and with all that I do for you. For you will enjoy the fullness of my salvation. Psalms 91. Isn't that awesome? We need to declare that, don't we? All right, so here are some, some information. I went on the CDC website as of February 23rd. There were 19 cases in the U.S. of coronavirus diagnosed in these states, Arizona, California, Illinois, Massachusetts, Washington, and Wisconsin. I heard today that a nursing home had many, many people in isolation because they're all there uh, together. Okay? I just heard that. Um, Twelve of these cases were related to travel to China. Two cases occurred through person-to-person -person transmission uh, to close household contacts of a person with confirmed um, corona. An additional 39 cases were reported among repatriated U.S. citizens, you know, citizens that are coming back, residents and their families returning from Hubei province, China. Three of those are from there and from the Diamond Princess cruise ship that was docked in Yokohama, Japan, 36 there. Thus, there at that time had been 53 cases within the United States. No deaths at that time had been reported. One person has since died. They're saying this affects the uh, physical, uh, a person that's physically um, challenged, okay, and also uh, those uh, that are elderly, okay? As of February 3rd, the closed cases, those clay cases where people went home or they're in uh, self-containment to watch them, is 42,371, they've been discharged. So 93% were discharged. Say 93%. 20, uh, 2,923 died, that's 7%. Worldwide, that's here. Worldwide, no, worldwide. This is worldwide, worldwide. Worldwide now, there's 84,611 cases worldwide. Deaths, and I told you, those that are physically compromised and the elderly. All right. Here's the stats on flu. Now, when I listened to the president, I didn't even know this. He said he was shocked. I was shocked. I had no idea of these numbers. I, ha I was clueless to these numbers. CDC states there are between 12,000 and 66,000 deaths per year in the U.S. from the flu. Same population, I mean, same population, hits the same people, all right? 2017 to 2018, in that year, that, that cycle, it was the biggest and, and most profound uh, death cycle of flu. 80,000 people died in the U.S. 
in the U.S. This season so far, listen to this, between 32 and 45 million have had the flu or are going to get it. Between 32, not here, but between, can, can you, I can't even comprehend. I said, really? Okay, 310,000 to 560,000 will be hospitalized. 14,000 people have died so far. How many? So why am I saying this? How come we're not hearing them going, And that's sad. An accepted norm every year. So guess what that did to me? I said, not on our watch. So what this did was awaken to me. Yes, coronavirus. We're going to deal with that. But look at the people that are dying from the flu. So what the devil meant, they go, it exposed something. It exposed something, at least to me, to our body, to David, that we're going to deal with this. All right. I've been listening to doctors like Nicole Safair, Dr. Siegel, Dr. Alvarez, and Dr. Drew, and others. And you know what they all say? All the doctors, they say this is being blown out of, way out of proportion. And like SARS, where did SARS, hello, where's Ebola? Remember, we were all going to disintegrate a few years ago. Remember that? Ebola. You know, and they were showing pictures, which is true. It's a real deal in Conga. In the Conga, that is huge. I mean, the eyes, I mean, they bleed out and everything. Boom, you don't hear it anymore. You know, do some research and find out when these things all of a sudden catch the news. Find out what's happening in the news cycle during that time. Begin to be investigators and not listen to it. Say, hmm. Holy Spirit, give me supernatural insight. Show me what is going on. And then how can I put lips and declarations strategically to this so I can be effectual a prayer warrior, an effectual prayer warrior, amen? That's who we are. We don't just come to church. Give me, give me idea. Okay. Okay. Do nothing. I'm not going to do anything. I'm not going to do anything. Go to church. Fill me up. Fill me up. Fill me up and give me more. I'm not satisfied. I'm going to another church. Give me. Give me. And then you go home and you sit like a lump. When we have the dunamis power of God inside of us to do something magnificent from this place, we just honored the blood of Jesus. We remembered the sacrifice of Christ. It's a weapon of war. What are we doing with our lives? Well, I'm offended. No, you're not anymore. You did the book. So I'm not coming to church because I've been offended. Well, that's done. You can't use that one anymore because we read a whole book on that one. Okay? Yep. We spent a month teaching on it. All right, here are some practical things. Well, let me go. 22 patients, one death, because he just had a, a news conference yesterday. Fully, 15 are fully on their way. Here's, here's what's amazing. He said, look at the Chinese numbers now. The numbers have gone down. I believe the prayers of the righteous. I believe the warriors rose up and began to speak to this thing. Ah. Uh, don't you find it interesting, the U.S. is the number one travel destination in the world, but it has the fewest cases. We have angels on our border, and we have people in high places that are actually hearing and delivering strategic things, doing strategic things, protecting us, right? Right? The biggest thing is please don't participate, and this is what came out of the news conference, inciting panic. Don't incite panic. 
you know, they've run out of face masks. And they found out that face masks don't work. It, they don't work. You, you can't go around putting a face mask unless you're sick. Then you're not spitting on people. You're not sneezing and coughing on people. But it does nothing. So what's happening is the medical community is having a hard time getting face masks because we're all freaking out. We got it. I got it. Use the inspired ones in stock, whatever. I, I tell you, praise Jesus. You know, this is what we do, and I'm going to give you some practical things. This is what they say to do. We do this every time we travel because we're going into Uganda here soon, and we do this. We take our, you know, hand sanitizer, and we sanitize our hands. But the very first thing when we walk into a plane is we have our wipes and, and, and people would look at us crazy, but we're doing, we're doing everything. We're doing the little thing that goes up. Now, do we believe that Jesus, the blood of Jesus? Absolutely. Absolutely. But we're going to do what we know to do. And so we're, we're doing this and that. And, and this one trip that, that it was on, it was to Uganda. And this one lady, I was sitting behind her. And bless her heart, and she was Ugandan, and she kept coughing and coughing, and she was using a knife to uh, like a pick in her teeth. And, and so she was using a knife, and I thought, whatever. Praise God, it might be special knife. I don't know, but she was doing that. And, and, but I knew she was in pain because you know how you do that when your tooth hurts? So I began to pray for her, and I go, oh, God. I said, you know, Jesus, touch, touch this woman. And, 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 of course, then later on she was coughing, coughing in her napkin, and it was filled with blood. Now, I don't know if it was from the knife or from her lungs or whatever. But, of course, when the cleaning crew went, because we stayed on the plane, they didn't sanitize anything. Wow. And she was touching the screen and all of this. But I said, but I spoke healing to her and prayed for her. But I thought, you know what, it's probably a good idea to use a, to use a uh, Clorox wipe yeah. on the screen when you get into these planes. What? And the vents. You know, all of it. You know, we just do it as we pray. We're kashadadabakuranamaki. You know what I'm saying. Also, there's these things. Uh, Didi uh, told me about this mesa colloida, colloidal, 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 silver, mezzo. Yeah, mezzo silver. And so... And it's the best. But we've been using the silver for a long, long time, David and I, to build up our immune system. We, we've used a lot of stuff for a long time. LDM, you can get that. That's a natural antibiotic. Herbal supplements, uh, supplements essential oils. Um, but the Surgeon General, as of this morning, came on and he said, forget the mask, please. Don't do it unless you're sick, okay, which we're not going to be. So we're not going to see anybody with masks in here because we're all going to be healthy, right? Okay, so let me read a couple other stats, and then I'm going to go into the message. Um, so this is a must-read from Hong Kong. Hong Kong uh, is the largest, has the largest population uh, in China of 8 million, okay? It's a city, 8 million people. Okay, or, uh, yeah, Hong Kong. And it only has 93 cases, and this is where it was born, over there, and two deaths, okay? So just to bring things into perspective. And uh, leave it to the Jews. Leave it to Israel. They're close to uh, a, 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 vi a vaccine. So, you know, let's take a deep breath. And let's just, I know uh, U.S. is working with them and all this stuff. Let's take a deep breath and let's just come into a place of faith. And I'm going to read some other scriptures. We, we just declared this, no weapon, Isaiah 54, 17, formed against us will prosper. Every tongue which raises or rises against us in judgment, we're to condemn it. This is the heritage of the servants of the Lord and their righteousness is from me. 2 Corinthians 10, 3, for though we walk in the flesh, we do not wage war in, according to the flesh. 
For the weapons of our warfare are not fleshly, but powerful through God for the tearing down of strongholds. We are tearing down false arguments and every high-minded thing that exalts against the, uh, itself against the knowledge of God, which is the word of God. We are taking every thought captive to obedience of Christ. If a fear comes, if a dart, and you know when it comes, who knows when it comes? You can, you can feel it. You can see it. We have a choice. We can either meditate on that or we take it and throw it down. It means to demolish in the Greek. Pull down that fear. Has someone said something, has a doctor said something about your health? Well, you can either accept that or you can begin to use God's medicine. Let them do their thing, but in the meantime, you take that thought captive, you take that report captive, and you bring it before the throne of God, the one who is our healer. Amen? We have a choice in all of this. 2 Timothy 1.7, for God has not given us a spirit of and timidity, but of power, love, and self-discipline. So, you know, in other words, this is just right. When, when the enemy comes, you know, you can tell. This morning was wacko. From the time I got up, everything was, huh, and I knew it was because of the message. I knew it because it was. <laughs> Finally, I was up here. Things were happening. I just sat back and I said, I just thank you for your peace. I just rest in peace. I choose as an act. I stripped off the stuff, strip off. And then I came into a place of peace and rest. Do the opposite. You have fear, do the opposite. If you're feeling a little sick, speak medicine to it. When you get a little tickle, tell that tickle to go. Don't let it get, oh, you know, I ignore it. I'm so busy. And then all of a sudden, It's easier to get it when it's a tickle and have faith when it's a tickle than when it grows, right? Ephesians, and I'll end with this, a final word. It's amazing. This scripture is going out everywhere in very unusual places. Be strong in the Lord and in his mighty power. Put on all of God's armor so that you will be able to withstand firm against all strategies of the devil. For we are not fighting against flesh and blood and enemies, but against evil rulers and authorities of the unseen world, against mighty powers in this dark world, and against evil spirits in the heavenly places. Therefore, put on every piece of God's armor so you will be able to resist in the time of evil. Then after the battle, you will be standing firm. Stand your ground. Putting on the belt of truth. In fact, if you're listening to the TV or whatever, stand your ground in that moment and say, in Jesus' name. And send the word. Right? Don't just sit and go. Stand the ground. Wow. I wondered what you were all looking at. I'm like David. The clothes are coming off. No, just the boots when he was in war. Just just the boot. I'm going to let it just as a sign and wonder. This is going to be my sign and, sign and wonder. That's what it's going <laughs> Woo! All right. Against every evil spirit in heavenly earth, put on the armor so you'll be able to stand. Then after the battle, okay, stand your ground, putting on the belt of truth. What is that? What are we doing right now? We're speaking truth right now. We're putting on truth. And the body armor of God's righteousness for shoes put on the peace that comes from the good news so that you will be fully prepared. In addition to all these, hold up the shield of faith to stop the fiery arrows of the devil. Put on salvation as your helmet. 
and take the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. Pray in the spirit at all times and on every occasion. When? Pray in tongues, the T word. Pray in tongues at all times. You know, in that word for the new year, revisit it. God showed me the worship team, which is all of you because we're all worshipers. As we gave voice and began to sing in the spirit, miracles would be unlocked. The supernatural atmosphere would change. The atmosphere would change. And supernatural miracles would come. Stay alert and be persistent in your prayers for all believers everywhere. Amen? So, we have a job to do. Right? Okay, so. Nope. There we go. Fearless resolve. It's interested. Interesting. I'm, I'm going to just do probably chapter 14. But, and then you all could read 15. Okay? 14 is what relates to today. And, of course, you know how we've been going. We've been doing this. And, you know, we've had speakers and we've had other things happen. And it just so happens on the day that all this is happening in the nation that we're coming to this chapter to reemphasize what I just said. First of all, uh, in this book, this, this chapter, it records the first missionary journey of Paul and Barnabas to Pergia and uh, Lycaon Lycaonian, okay? Like Kaonia. All right. So it's interesting. Remember, these are missionaries. Now it happened in Iconian that they went together to the synagogue of the Jews and so spoke that a great multitude, both of the Jews and of the Greeks, believed, but the unbelieving Jews stirred up the Gentiles and poisoned their minds against the brethren. Isn't that interesting? Poisoned. Poisoned their minds. Okay, what's happening? What's the enemy trying to do right now? That's right. Therefore, they stayed there a long time. Isn't that fun? Speaking boldly, fearlessly, and courageously in the Lord who was bearing witness to the word of his grace, granting signs and wonders to be done by their hands. Miracles were happening all over the place, all over the place. But the multitudes of the city was divided. The multitude of the city was divided, part sided with the Jews and part with the apostles. And when a violent attempt was made by both the Jews and the Gentiles, or the Gentiles and the Jews, with their rulers to abuse and stone them, they became aware of it. And, oh, look at this. They fled to Lystra and Derby, cities of like, like, I'm sorry, like Aonia. All right, like Onia, and to the surrounding region, and they were preaching the gospel there. All right, Lystra is interesting. It was a city in central Anatolia, which is now present-day Turkey. Okay, so if you can get the geographical location. It's mentioned five times in the New Testament. Lystra was visited several times by Paul, the apostle, along with Barnabas or Silas. There... It was in that city that Paul met a young disciple named Timothy. Okay, a little history. And in Lystra, a certain man. Now, I just love this because they fled. And I bet they fled out of fear. They were human. They fled out of fear. But look what they just ran into here. And in Lystra, a certain man with, without strength in his feet was sitting, a cripple from his mother's womb, who had never walked. The man heard Paul speaking, Paul observing him intently and seeing that he had faith to be healed, said with a loud voice, stand up straight on your feet. You know, he didn't think, stand up. He said, stand up straight on your feet. 
and he leaped and walked. He leaped up and walked just like that. Ah, we're seeing the church overseas and other places and even here. We're starting to see that happening, aren't we? We are seeing this happen in this season and in this time. And when the people saw what Paul had done, they raised their voices. Now, remember, this place worshiped gods and goddesses, okay? The gods have come down to us in the likeness of men. And Barnabas they called Zeus and Paul Hermes because he was the chief speaker. Now, there were two things going. There was the Greek gods and the Roman gods, the Greeks, these people that spoke, uh, you know, the, uh, the Lycanonians, they declared Paul as Zeus, okay? And Zeus, it coincides with the Roman god Jupiter, okay, in Roman mythology. All right, there were no actual differences between Zeus and Jupiter in that day between the Romans and Greeks. Likewise, Hermes is the same as Mercury, all right? Mercury. Hermes is Greek. Mercury is Roman. They said Barnabas was Zeus, okay, because of his commanding demeanor. And Paul, now remember, Paul was five foot four. Paul means tiny, okay? So here's Barnabas because of his commanding demeanor, and Paul was Hermes because of his eloquence, and he was the messenger, Okay, so they were trying to worship them. Then the priest of Zeus, whose temple was in front of the city, brought oxen and garlands to the gates, intending to sacrifice with the multitudes. But when the apostles Barnabas and Paul heard this, they tore their clothes and ran in among the multitude, crying and saying, Men, why are you doing these things? We also are men with the same nature as you and preach to you that you should turn from these useless things to the living God who made the heaven and earth, the sea, and all things that are in them, who in bygone generations allowed all nations to walk in their own ways. Nevertheless, Nevertheless, <laughs> he did not leave himself without witness in that he did good, gave us rain from heaven and fruitful seasons, filling our hearts with food and gladness. And with these sayings, they could scarcely restrain the multitudes from sacrificing to them. Now, let me tell you something. In this season... And we, I've been telling the boot camp this. God's going to move through each and every one of you who just say yes, God, in such magnificent ways, miraculous ways, where you're going to lay hands on people, instantly healed, people delivered, where you just go up to them and before you can say anything, they start shaking and flopping like fish on the floor. And you have to make sure that you're dead. you got to make sure that pride, arrogance are dead. Because they're going to want to come to you and say, oh, who are you? And, and, and where did you come from? And let's do lunch and blah, blah, blah. You have to watch taking on accolades from people because they don't know Jesus at that point. They don't know what else to do because they've been trained in this humanistic society, right? And to go after an idolatrous society to place credit where credit is not due. Credit is not due, okay? The Jews from uh, Antioch and Iconium, now listen, these precious people that came the first time to stir up, they were there in Iconium, to stir up the people and poison their brains, they followed those voices. Those people followed and came there, and having persuaded the multitudes, they stoned Paul and dragged him out of the city, supposing he was dead. Now it's ratcheting up. Oh, my gosh. First, it was just driving them out. Now they stoned him. Right? I'm telling you, if you saw someone with a... And they didn't use pebbles. 
You know, these were, they wanted you dead. That was the whole part. And so they dragged him over. Well, here we go. This would be our church. When the disciples, they didn't run, did they? They gathered around Paul. He rose up and went into the city. He was either raised from the dead or because he was raised from a near-death experience. Okay? Um, and the next day he departed with Barnabas to Derby. Now, he had to have been healed because to have big boulders thrown on you and they're dragging his body, assuming he's dead, you can't make a 60-mile trip on a donkey or walking in that condition. The next day, this was a miraculous, this was miraculous times. That's the times we're in. He didn't take a lift or an Uber. Right? <laughs> and when they had preached the gospel to that city and made many disciples, what'd they do? They returned right back into the face of death. They went right back oh, yeah. in. They didn't flee away. Oh, yeah. They didn't. We have, some Christians are so freaked out. They, they're locking themselves in. I've been hearing stories over the internet and different things. I'm saying, oh, my gosh. These people, he was stoned. And they went right back to those people. Why? Because they don't belong to themselves. We don't belong to us. We belong to Christ. And he's the one calling the shots. They returned not only to Lystra. But they went to Iconian and Antioch where all the Jews, all the people that wanted to stone him in the first place originated. They went back. They went back. And they strengthened the souls of the disciples, exhorting them to continue in the faith, saying, we must, through many tribulations, enter the kingdom of God. We don't give up. We don't freak out. We don't panic. We don't run and hide. Right? We don't do it. This is not a time. We're going to see all kinds of stuff this year. We're going to see exposure. We're going to see all kinds of things. But we cannot, we have to give ear to what we're listening to and what we're watching. Acts 14, 20, 22. However, when the disciples gathered around him, he rose up. When it's already did that, didn't I? All right. Blah, 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 blah. We must go through it. There we go. So when... They had appointed elders in every church. Think about that. They just went back there. They took ground. See, when he was stoned, you know, remember how they fled? You know, God did the miracle and all this stuff. But when he fled, he came in, got stoned, and something happened to Paul and the disciples in that miracle. They took ground in themselves. They took ground. They took fear and crucified it. They took death and destruction and persecution and crucified it and said, you know what? We're not the same people anymore. When God does a miracle in your life, when you overcome something in your life, you're not the same anymore. Right, Dale? You're not the same anymore. You're not the same. Who can relate? When something you're going through and you go, God, I just wish this. And we as pastors, we know some of the stuff you're going through. We're going, God, could it just be quick? Could it just be quick? And then the Lord opens our eyes and he's got it. He's got it. But what is being deposited inside of us all for our next season that we're going to walk into? That's right. And prayed, they prayed with fasting. They commended them to the Lord in whom they had believed. And after they had passed through uh, Pasithia, they came to uh, Pamphylia. Now when they had preached the word in Perga, they went down. Listen to all that they were doing. They weren't going to be stopped by nothing. From there they sailed to Antioch. There they go again. Where they had been commended to the grace of God for the work which they had completed. Now, when they had come and gathered the church together, they reported. Can you imagine all the testimonies? Those were just some of the testimonies that we heard about. All that God had done with them and that he had opened the door of faith to who? The Gentiles. 
So they stayed there a long time with the disciples. Okay, I'll do 15 next time. But uh, isn't it interesting how they faced it? They didn't run from it. They didn't hide from it. They faced fear in the face. They faced it in, in the face. <laughs> and conquered it. So this is a time and season to be prudent. To, to look at your situation, prepare, but spend much less time preparing in the natural than you do in the spirit. And begin to ask God, begin to ask Holy Spirit, what is the strategy for you individually? Who does he want you to talk to? Who, what ground does he want you to conquer and take, right? And not only take it. Remember when we passed around the stakes and we talked about staking a claim? And I know several of you have gone and you took your little stakes and you went home and you pounded them into your property in different places, work, some of you, outside. See, when you stake a claim, that means it's yours. You can claim it, but until you stake it, you can have the blood of Jesus. But until you plead it, until you appropriate it, until you designate it over whatever, then, then it's just there. But you purposefully have to own your walk. You purposefully have to own this stuff. You know, we come up like I'm, you know, I could take off this thing. I am sweating like you wouldn't believe. Because I have such passion. I mean, my boots falling off of me. You know, I'm sweating, but because I have a passion. Pastor David has a passion. Pastor Risa, the elders, Pastor Crystal, Pastor, we have Crystal and Brooke. We have passion for you to get this. We spend hours and hours daily mentoring, bringing you through Shalom Ministries, healing of brokenness, healing of mindsets, ripping those things apart. Why? Because you're an army. We love you and we want to see you succeed and take ground. Not just take ground and go, well, it's a little hard now. I'm going to go home. No. You're a warrior. Right? Snap out of it. Hallelujah. Worship team, come up. Father. We thank you, God, that we will not back down. We will not retreat. We will not give up, and we will not shut up declaring the mighty works that you do in our life and what you are doing in this nation and in this world. We declare. In fact, you know what? We're all going to stand up. We're going to have time to do this. Jeannie, you come up. Get ready. Uh... Mary Lou, you come up and get in your position. We're just going to all position everybody. And I was going to just have us hold hands, but I just love doing the circle thing. So I want everybody to get into a circle. Everybody, let's get this done in about 20 seconds or less. 20, 19, 18, 17, 16. If you're new here, just follow the crowd. Just follow the crowd. Worship team two, you come into this too. You come into this too, worship team. Come on, Faithy. Terry, you get down in the circle too. Oh yeah, you can do it. You come down in the circle too. And I know the camera people, they need to stay, but Terry, you can come on down. And you know what, just scrunch in. Because what we're going to do in a one voice, one accord declaration is we're going to do damage to a spirit of fear in this nation and in this world. So you're going to repeat after me, in the name of Jesus. Okay, now I want you to do this. I don't want, in the the name of Jesus, I want to come from your spirit man. And we're all doing it. No one's looking at each other going, 
I feel stupid. We all do. <laughs> but we are going to do this in one accord because this right here is powerful. God put us up here for a strategic reason, and we're going to be obedient and steward what he's given us. And that's authority. We have governmental and judicial authority, and we're going to use this. Amen? Wow, this is growing me right out of it. Okay. All right. All right. In the name of Jesus. Because I'm a blood-bought bride. Warrior. I command and I loose and strip every demonic spirit of fear, terror, panic, disease, infirmity, sickness off of this nation, off of this world. In Jesus' name, name. coronavirus, Coronavirus. you have a name, name. and your name name. is under the name name. of Jesus Christ. I step on that name. I step on that name. That name is under my feet. In one accord, we declare and send forth the hosts of heaven to go into this nation to rip apart, to strip off, to annihilate. Okay, I'm not hearing you as loud. To annihilate every spirit of Leviathan, of Jezebel, of witchcraft, of divination, of of death, of destruction. Obliterate it. Rip it to shreds. Every territorial spirit of masonry, of Luciferianism, of Satanism. Rip it apart and expose it. In Jesus' name, name. hosts of heaven, heaven. rip off off. every camouflaging spirit spirit. of every hidden thing thing. that has been set set. as a time bomb bomb. to go off off. at specific times, times. defuse them. In the name of Jesus, we plead the blood. We apply the blood. In Jesus' name, we rejoice. We celebrate because we know you are God and the devil is not. In Jesus' name. you Jesus all right we're gonna shout one more time We're going to shout again. (laughs) And I want you all, by your sanctified imagination, because he gave us that, to picture and to watch the walls of coronavirus fall. To watch influenza fall. To watch... Of all walls of fear and terror and panic in this nation fall. I want you to see it. So close your eyes. We're going to shout and watch those walls come down. One, two, three. Did you 
it? Do you believe it? Then you need to speak and declare it. Amen? Turn to somebody and say this. I'm going to keep you accountable. Now turn to the next person. Turn to the other person. Say, I'm going to keep you accountable. I'm going to keep you accountable. Keep you accountable. All right. Go ahead and find your seats.